le ashiyak amar gashti. Marasol that kora nort kor kosk er ne bink dini yibert as the tehe ma thogok ne kos ne korte in igen kido la nolog gavile asnei. Inish he shig um willen brachte yakt sha le tort kon kien. Agus on a show on Rachel, Egan Realtors are engaged, and in Gruchos in the Vilgnardine, the war policy had Tobishtaka, Mag Dane is a lehead, Shakas Nefirka Laidu, Agus Nehashirti a Laidu, Gwilinship Conractiak, then Taisho Conkinagus, Coked Horse in the Bank, Dina Havamakas, which will in Rakdiak Shinetat, which I shall fear. Mag Tisha. So, um, so, mich kaffer dir alle schon. Egal wie und und Vrehev, Vrehev uns jene ein Jahr nus Senat kurz bieten uns. So, so da go le le Richu an Chorus Jilhule thon schon. Er hat doch an Don Judgment. Tu frisch da kann billig und das falsch auf re Sessionen schon. Hier wird nur er schon. Nur wie mir hin mar mar Cholor er an Chola Achul, nur bleibt der Vater hin. Biogan gönne Kassene, nach mir nur Irak der B, an 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 Arget der Iachanash, Togu an Chach und den er gesch Chach alle hoch Toif. Nur wie schlimm sie gemacht den er B, le Fekal er gesch Chach win a wanch Toif. Ac dyr e'r an frehwn ys yn oed cwrts, caffer yn jli a reitiw. Ta si'r rachig na banc yna, nag fysyl dof siwd ac yn erid, chachar be a hwy golod yna. Ac si'r dyr e'r gest agen yna a hachta, nag ymwch yn proses, ymwch si'r solier, ac ymwch si'r fair ote. Ac ymwch i gest i banc yr be, Chacht yn ŵws yn bohor ag ystyr ôl tymig i gwrt yn chachwyd. Caffer proses, solier ag ys ffeirolche fyhaen. Ac camwyd mae'r rhealtys glacha leis yn brehaf yn oedd cwrt yn y leis sio ag ys ffeilsiofer yn bilis yn gylwyr. Gymwyd ag chacht y bilio di. Tisha, I'm informed that today is the second anniversary of the formation of this government. So, happy, happy anniversary. Now, the document that uh, accompanied the formation of the government, namely the programme for government, contains a very clear, very unambiguous, very easy to understand commitment on page 22. It states, and I quote, the government will complete <coughs> and publish a strategy to tackle fuel poverty. A strategy to tackle fuel poverty. Now, since that commitment was made, in writing to the Irish public two years ago, the period for which fuel allowance is payable has been drastically reduced. Allowances for to, to, to help people pay for their gas, ESB, except for people who are vulnerable people, who are elderly people, who are on social welfare, they have also been slashed. So is that the fuel strategy? Is that the fuel strategy? Or is there some other new fuel strategy going to be produced uh, in, the, in, the, in the indeterminate future? <coughs> The answer to that question is no, it's not. And when is it going to be? Well, the programme for government is for the period of government. That's a period of five years. Uh, we're, we're just into, this, into the second year of, uh, of the election of government, three years to run, uh, and uh, we expect to, to have... Uh, there are some things in the programme for government that we have been unable to do. For instance, the review of upward rent allowances, and we've said that because of constitutional difficulties, uh, and a number of others. But the answer to your question is no, it's not. Well, Deputy Robert Dowds. Curra Mogath, Lias Cahirri. But while I'm cast cur er teisio cur iaw lair an bila fwyn siamad, caan am ei se os ar gawr agus caan am ei an referen os ar gawr agus an mei a referen a wae ne bwynch leis no am ei in ees môr na sin ag eist. Well, fel siwf ar an bila an ceid sesiwn ele, ta reis am na coske. Byg yn refren o'n rhyf Gerard na Blian yn ilan ddoth a sgrwch ag y ffôl. Ac ni fyg yn refren o'r siŵl un yn ennyr bai refren ele no gwo le dol leis. Ilch yn sgrwch ag yn rhywbeth ag y bwynt y siŵ. Ac byg niath am y gach dyna 
Eid Shahfli, I guess, in the cost of a new cooking gear. Sean, talk to Sean Athuriel. Yes, you did. Sorry, Riv Jaron Aplian. Ramagat Alaska and Corla. Got cash to go there and teach Marielle there. Rock the act to guilt. Er in Kedal she has to a piece. Rock the act guilt. They have Gursi Gursi lachtena lachtena na shunta and Villa lachtena na shunta. Now to shunta will have been the shen go hex Kamora and Ked for his she there. Agus na ginehe eksula ta tharlu in stimpel er shrad ivorga. So kahin a fal shofar bila lachtena na shunta. An dairi rod las kan korla na mar yaller kursi tihiyta agus a stoke golin keshta hagam jagani in kasulish in keshta viegan chakta o higin. A tugam fun yara o olas na toke gan er start dom le dani will alon dini a yiber ta sa tihe. I gildara, I korlach on the gildara. In our era, gul achelav aglaka, I korlach on the gildara. Er nis mo teche na marata a yena vig ein korlach on the ella satir. So kolas marich asin with an ishmer yowl er an bille tehiacht, agus an tlu doishe an sort rodatar shule gildara. Well, that was a good mention. Ní dóram go mbeidh sé sin fáilte a gcuid, gcuid am níos déanaí sa bhliain. Níl sé ar thonnaigh sé riven rialta sa gcuid sé a hiv in cinnlín sin an bhliain sin. Cuid mé scéal a chogadh fúi a caitheann amag sé ar gomas ag an ara ag an ara dínhan a flán a fáilte a fúi shrádi vorgas is. Is tau te koro de shaw fi mar kanchlesh mar kanch fi inye inye wan fi tau te ne shaw de shin ak nihe elagus elagus aras elan shaw se se kah. No, chak te bernu jokin. Do we last can call an an important piece of legislation promised for quite some considerable time in relation to crime? The bail bill has been promised for a long time as regards being a major and fundamental. Element in the fight against organised crime. But I ask the Taoiseach when it is expected to have the bill before the House and when uh, and if it has been approved in Cabinet. Similarly, in relation to the Criminal Justice Proceeds of Crime Bill, uh, in, in, uh, also uh, a very important element in the fight against crime, uh, can I ask if the heads have been discussed and are approved by Cabinet and when will the bill be before the House? Yeah, these are two important bills, Deputy. Uh, the bail bill has not come before Government yet in terms of the heads being discussed. Uh, the situation as far as the proceeds of crime bill is concerned is that those discussions with CAB are still ongoing and it won't come before Government until they are concluded. Let's go and follow could I ask the Taoiseach two items please over uh, recent days uh, the housing adaptation uh, grants for people with disabilities the mobility aids for housing grants the housing aid for older people these were announced and in County Kerry last year we received 3.2 million euros this year we are receiving 1.4 million euros a 50 percent reduction not only is this going to hurt disabled people vulnerable people people who need assistance in their homes but it is also going to have the knock-on effect that the builders small builders who would have relied on that work to carry them over uh, the summer months and into the winter time they're going to be robbed of that, that, that you, the, this is under oh sorry this is under the housing bill yep. and um but not that, the detail though well well it is but i just want the t-shirt to comment on it because you're hurting two <laughs> sectors of society by cutting that grant yep. 1.4 million this year 3.2 last year it is a massive cut yep. and and also the other item of promised legislation it is with regard to young nurse, nurses. As you know, the Minister for Health made, brought out his new programme whereby he wanted nurses to work for 80% of, in other words, the days of, of uh, same work for equal pay. That was gone by the Minister for Health. But on this, uh, there has been the sinister development recently of young nurses uh, go, being called into meetings and being threatened that their contracts will not be renewed unless they are willing to accept the minister's new uh, uh, new scheme. Well, that is wrong. Deputy, and this is under the welfare. <laughs> there are a lot of other deputies want to get yes, in. I just the please. Welfare at work bill. Oh, I'll ask the minister to on that. Come yes. on. Because these people's welfare is being hurt. Welfare is hurt. 
In respect to the graduate nurses, uh, I'd say that uh, the, the changes that have been made in recent discussions, we want to lead to a position where uh, young uh, graduate nurses can have uh, an assurance that they can lead on to um, full-time permanent nursing positions. If you have information, Deputy Healy Ray, about a young nurse being threatened by somebody, then I'd like to have that information because that is not the way that um, that business should be conducted. Everybody's entitled to uh, courtesy and to have their to have their case uh, have their case listened to. There's nobody being threatened here to accept anything uh, that um, Minister Riley's involved in. Um, in regard to your question about uh, adaptability of housing for persons with disability, um, the Minister for Housing, um, Minister Sullivan here beside me, uh, issued the, uh, the details of the grants being expended here and answered a topical issue uh, matter on it yesterday. The grants were awarded uh, fairly, but no more than anything else in the current, um, current economic circumstances, there has been an overall reduction in the amount available for capital grants like this. But your country, no more than any other, received a fair allocation from the Minister uh, on a reduced basis. Mark, Deputy Brian Stanley. I want to ask the Taoiseach about, about commitment in the programme for government in relation to refuse collection and the reef reliefs for low-income households. It was promised two years ago, and happy anniversary again, but we are two years on. Next month, the same low-income households are going to get letters in, in, in relation to the house tax or property tax. They're facing the water charges next year. And this is, this is widows and pensioners and the disabled and the blind. They are all going to get these. Uh, people in Leash are paying refuse charges to private companies for the last 26 that's, years. That's, we're waiting 26 years for a waiver scheme, the, and a waiver scheme was promised by this government when it came into power. And I've raised this with you, with you several times and with the tarnished day. When do we see the waiver scheme? These low-income households, you. all households are under pressure. These low-income households are in absolute dire straits, Taoiseach. And I'm appealing to you to, to bring forward response. a national waiver scheme for refuse collection Thank for you. these households, including in County, County Leash, that are waiting 26 years for it. Yeah. Take your point. I'll have to come back to you, actually, with the details of what the story is there. I'll let the Deputy know. Jack Dean, is there nothing? Ryan Canal at our Fogel Hall, Ryan Van Rockdale. But our Dusbar, Lug, Anorig, Norvimidig, Goran, Fui, Billy, Gamba, Falcha, Oscar Eggles, Osper, Leganam, Kenna, Louis Gantara, John Burton, Bedekus, Mwinoff, and Realtors there. The Mamram Minachan, the Mabili, Alshu, Oscar Eggles, Eganam, Kenna. So Shakas and Rod Rocktool, and just on Minachan. So it's a good old Shailinga. The town tape shouldn't talk on this part the end of Asperger in Yanon, Nakmech and Billa, Falsh Asperger. August, come out most fair, Spring of the Tiddle, I'll show in some plan rock theatre, so go fiddling and catch the core Asperger in his Eska. On three pieces of rock theatre, can one know on Billa Ahantis Inchkin, the gender recognition bill, at our Fograha. Agus Gjukiche Ivaim or Falso for Emlena Agus Masson Grafche Gashig and Ara John Burton Alju Rave and Kosh and Wilshire Shin Falso Tarlu. In Count Ella, in Count Mother La Aquamarie Case Case in Ardeen U Albrock Rent Reviews, Upward Only Rent Reviews. Tyson Gorienchev Ogre to Ling and Tauchan and Dafarty, Gemerche, Gemerche for Rockte, Kondaila Lesh. Hoganard Aina, Corla, the party in Loch Dyber, Gavetia, Yanavog and Son, Hoshi Corla, Difrul, Don Realtas, Nakfader, Yanav, Gavetia, me von Rakdul. Fathers had to account for the reference of the Hagot in me, Derefo, and Fader Dyla Lesh, on Kesh the Ta, a course stop or of on Rakti Akshin Hogan the Stock, I was on Bunrak the Akru. Can dial all the shin. Agus on on Kian Dernach to Bronham. Kian the Cormac Kest Tamil Tamil the Shock no hin. Mother Lesson Rock the Echt the Tie Casto can Uspadam the Lani new on Kian Nashun to new. Kian or the Veg no Willain Dulkin Kian Tarla had Mother the Shin. Agus Mother the Board new. National Pediatric Hospital Development Board. So Tar Rock the Echt 
Nealis Winkano or Emlena Vexha, Yenu and Forward Fee and on Ospadel Noah, uh Achmel and on Rockdeck Down, I was Neil Board, uh Ganasar and Project in Fulaher. The cool kid Luchin Chinat by uh Tourist Call Le Fall Fui uh Fuin uh Ober uh Lanu no Katar Shul or Haven Ospadel Nua. Um uh, it's Svejlat kështë kër erë në alë kështë turi shëfra i kërgëtë shpishin. Gë lani onë nashën të nëve të bëllë, falë që hëllë e fadë, ak një dojlëm gëllë që erë në kënë la të një anë. So të 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 këshmëjnë fëi e shënë në alë që kën, agës ljasë u kërë lesh, so kërë me shkëllë këgën të akëtë fëi shënë fëshën. Një ilë që gështë këmë kërë fërë në anë fëi adhë u virë kë Bisha shin luqe o hef antla vil të shqe Ak liu mërë nga kërë mërë nana shin e jene Ak një që gjesh këmë kërë fërë nana Anë vila a hantësh Ta në kinë nëhe kën vila shin Ta abara shu lahë shu të ege bëjnë të shë Ak një rëhani kështë e këgën vil të këfohëll Bëjshë e fëtë që e shilëm Rëvë gjerë në blinë Ak is Anë Një në sakëm këtë këtë gjyre, ka duhet që në hera fëj fëjtë që ka në minu në vili, agës të gjyllë në vili, a skëllëgje e gë në amë kejnë, gë më këshit fëjtë që a ke brandë me erën në mundë të rohë që e gënë takëtë. Qëfë të mërë lu me këtë në? Gë më agër të ishëk, i gjenë këpëllë me kërhi Justice Quirk, an rëgjë skimë dë në Magdala Laundry, së së kërën rëjëtës, së së kërën do, së gë kështë në Cain Fa Nakwil Summer Hill er enlisted in the Magdalene's at all egg just as quirk. August Tisha Cain Fa Nakwil Ain Frager fui Bethany home. Bones. Tisha. The shot that the shot that we guessed and showed our Magdalene laundries because Shinnan Shinnan Road a fi on on tourist call on Shannon or Macalish a general general less material because. Agus... Kom alla sen on climate bill, kallar jag det sen on 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 climate bill. Och där är det andra rikter från då? Och där är det on climate bill. Vi ska se nu om vi andar att kan att skåra en rättes en chatt en chakatte. Vi när kin leds i att ha en. Så att ha bra skull. Bäst är bäst är bäst är jag kan. Egan Hushta, I guess uh his journey again dolphin. Uh and Kaun Fui Kursi Gosh, Bashan Fight to her um Riv Jar and a Blina, Robert Shulan. Margaret Shin Jara the Rio Nehivra. Um we now go on to the Health Service Executive Governance Bill two thousand and twelve Shannon's second stage. Deputy Catherine Murphy, I, I, I'm not too sure what uh, time is in the, oh, you, you, the full 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Fihin Omid. Thank you. Um, I mean, obviously the title of this bill is the HSE Governance Bill, but it really should be titled the HSE Partial Govern Governance Bill because it deals with, it deals with uh, the issue of, predominantly the issue of, of new directorates rather than a whole of gov governance approach to the HSE and a reform of that. Um, the big myth about the HSE when it, when it was established was that it was going to replace the old health board system. In fact, what occurred was public representatives were removed from the boards and uh, a new administrative tier was placed uh, above what was a dysfunctional health board system, which was really uh, a, um, a product of the 19th century poor law, uh, poor law um, uh, time. Uh, and that remained in place. It was a top-down approach. 
where there was a need for a whole of organisational reform. And we can see that it was, uh, it was despite good people working in it, uh, the structure and the culture uh, ended up being a failure. It's unquestionable that there were abuses by public representatives on these boards, and I most definitely don't stand over that. However, they did perform an oversight role which was lost when they were removed, and it has never been properly replaced. Uh, the HSE, instead of simplifying things, introduced a new level of bureaucracy that has proven to be extremely difficult to interact with for the citizen, and this feeds into clientelism. You can't have clientelism, that kind of approach to politics, unless your systems of governance are inaccessible uh, to the public, because they need the middleman or the middlewoman, um, and that's one of the dysfunctional things about Irish politics. A good citizen interface for any organisation is essential in any reform uh, process. Um, but there have to, it has to be underpinned by the services being there. A website is now the, the front window or the shop window of any service, and I challenge anyone to make sense of the HSE's website. A website is a mirror image of the organisation that is, is, it's underpinned by. The processes, the culture, the services can all be seen, and it, to me it looks like chaos. To me it looks like an organisation that's inwardly focused and process driven. And it's a tall order to expect the change proposed in this uh, legislation to replace, uh, to replace the board with a new director to deliver the kind of change that's needed. Um, this was the approach, Minister, that was taken with local government where directors of service were introduced. But it didn't change the culture because what, what was underpinned by it uh, wasn't changed. Um, and there's much more substantial ref reform required. But we need to see a whole, um, I mean, I know this might be done on an incremental basis, but we need to see what the uh, overall blueprint is. And the, the people who work within the system and the citizens uh, have you know, a right to expect uh, that. Um, the HSC was also a very useful uh, vehicle for ministers in the past um, where they could blame another organisation. It was a kind of Teflon uh, for the, uh, the Minister for Health. Uh, also, parliamentary questions often took a ridiculously long time to, um, uh, to answer. And there's still uh, a difficulty with accountability. Uh, responses from uh, the HSE take longer than the uh, than normal parliamentary questions. And one of the areas I think is deficient is that I'm asking possibly the same question as somebody else is. And I think there's a duplication by virtue of the fact that you have to go looking in another location for questions that other people have asked so as you're not duplicating. And I think that there's efficiencies that could be got there in terms of accountability and, and uh, a more simpler, a simpler approach to, to, to actually seeing what's happening. I know the uh, changes in the bill are intended to change that, but uh, it will require a change in both structure and the organisational culture uh, to achieve it. The existing um, accountability arrangements under the Health Act 2004 are retained, and they relate to service plans and annual report. In many cases, they're deficient. For example, there's no point in having service plans if there aren't, if there aren't services. Um, I'm not going to use a few examples, and they're not an exhaustive list because we all know the people who come to us. And I wish when people criticise politicians for being in their constituency uh, on occasions, maybe once a week or twice a week or whatever, uh, and were being accused of out there filling potholes, I wish it was only potholes uh, that we were attending to. But this, the, the issues are much more complex, and we can see the failures in the system. I had a family with a 12-year-old ready to go into secondary school, um, two years um, waiting for um, uh, tonsillectomy. Uh, she's on the waiting list for, for, for the last two and a half years, missing school, on antibiotics, not the kind of management that you would want, um, and not well, and losing weight. Um, she's two years on the waiting list for Tala. Uh, her parents looked for her to be, they have no private health insurance, her parents looked for her to be moved to uh, another hospital, uh, because even if she was on a list, she might be, um, she might be, um, if she was on a list for, for, for the actual procedure, she might end up being able to get something through the tr treatment purchase fund.
But when she was referred to Crumlin, this, is, this was the outcome that, uh, thank you for your referral to the ENT department. Currently, the outpatient's waiting time for two years for a routine ENT appointment. And they refuse her, refused her referral. We're busy talking about building hospitals and building a children's hospital and is needed. But while we're waiting for that, we're seeing the failures. Um, for, and that child has been failed. Um, there's no point in having service plans unless there are services behind those service plans. Um, so let's look at real reform that impacts on people. Uh, the services can often depend on your address, which is a lottery I fr frequently come across. Uh, in many cases, it, it affects children, uh, children that are provided with essential services, such as occupational uh, therapy. Again, I pick an example. Unfortunately, it's only an example. Uh, uh, the Paediatric Occupational Therapy Service was developed in Kildare West Wicklow in 2009. To go on, the resources have been. This is coming from the HSE. The resources have been depleted in recent years due, due to reg resignations, and it has not been po possible to replace the staff due to the moratorium. Now, um, in many cases, this is, you, you know, this is uh, penny rich and pound foolish because what's going to happen is a child will miss out on the developmental uh, opportunities that would be given by occupational therapy, and we will pick up the tab later on uh, by way of uh, disability payments on all of the rest of it. This is just downright stupid. Um, it, and, it, it, and as I say, it, it, it can very much depend where you are in the country. If you were maybe in another part of the country, that simply wouldn't be occurring. Um, and, you know, I don't see whether a new directorship uh, is going to make that different. Are they going to shift people from maybe, maybe Cork to Loud or from Galway to Kildare? Um, I think you really have to have that whole of governance approach to really understand where people are, where the deficiencies are and how you plug those deficiencies. Um, another example is, you know, a eight-year-old falling through the cracks. Um, uh, can't uh, eight-year-old struggles to dress himself, can't hold a knife and fork, uh, needs occupational therapy, uh, but they can't even put him on the list. He was diagnosed by CAMS uh, with Asperger's and attention deficit disorder, um, but was told that um, he'll not be seen because there's no list for him to be put on. CAMS don't have an occupational therapist, even if he was to be referred back to them, and that the community option is not an option any longer. Again, it's, it may well be a local, uh, it may well be a local play out of this, but it is, it's certainly impacting on the child, but a director and a, you know, service plans are not going to resolve that if you don't have those people in place, and I can't highlight that strongly enough. Um, and, and, you know, um, another child, and this is the, the, own, the last one I'll use, uh, has specific, uh, a specific learning language uh, difficulty, and speech and language therapy is not going to be provided in the school in Tala that specialises for the small number of children that have this, this disorder. Um, um, in, he has both, uh, emo he's em emotionally impacted in, in this, but he's also impacted in, in terms of his educational uh, prospects. And the particular service, uh, when it's provided, a child is taken out and given intensive occupational therapy for two years, um, and then they go back into uh, mainstream school, and the experience of children that have gone through that route is really, really good. And, you know, to, do, to not have those services in place um, is just absolutely um, uh, criminal, in my, in my opinion. I've come across several children with behavioural, uh, that need behavioural therapies, and I've had parents um, come in to me and say, my big fear is my child, if they don't get this, they're it's displaying violent tendencies, you know, at primary school level, um, you know, obviously have some difficulties, need behavioural therapies to modify the behaviour, and the parents on, on, have come in to me and said, my child is going to end up in prison. Now, this is the failure that we talk about when we look at the past and we complain about the kind of Ireland of the past. This is the Ireland of now. And these are people I'm coming across, and I don't suppose Kildare is a whole lot different to other parts of the country. It may well be that there is a more deficient service by virtue of the fact that, um, you know, we had a very rapidly uh, develop, uh, developed um, 
population profile in recent years and the services didn't catch up with it um, and we're now struggling with that because people are being lost in the system. Another thing that is occurring is, and it's not been provided for, is that we have a younger cohort of people um, within our public service now because the older people tend to be the ones that are opting out when retirement packages are put in place. You know, 50% of those will probably be women because there's a requirement to work now with mortgages and all the rest of it. Um, and essentially, there is no cover being given for maternity leave. And uh, we, we can't be serious about providing a service unless we're covering uh, something like maternity leave because that's where gaps are providing. And I'm absolutely, let me be 100% clear about it, I think maternity leave is an absolute uh, essential. Um, well, there's enormous, I'm just, uh, well, there's enormous good people employed in the HSC. Uh, most are not responsible, and most are not responsible for the structure of the organisation. I'm quite certain that they're frustrated by the service that they're, they're working within. Uh, but any change that happens must occur with their cooperation. And this top-down approach, I've got concerns about. We're told that the new directors will have a critical role to play, and I hope that ends up being the case. It's not just a question of hiring good people to fill those directors, to, uh, to directorates. It must be underpinned by values and objectives. For example, the robotic approach to the home health system in, in recent months flies in the, place, in the face of the kind of objective of trying to keep people living independently within their own homes for as long as possible. It cannot purely be about financial outcomes. Uh, our, our financial uh, outcomes are the only things that are measures. I'm concerned about the, the language that's being used. It's very much uh, the language of the market and management speak. People who use the health services are not customers, they're citizens. They pay their taxes if they're lucky enough to do it. They have an entitlement to a service when they require that service. So let's stop this management speak and talking about people, uh, you know, a 12 year old waiting for an ENT um, appointment is not a customer. She's a citizen of this country that is entitled to be cared for as a citizen and has an entitlement. Um, and the, the, the citizens need to be put at the heart of the redesign of the process. The outcomes are outcomes for them. Having said that, it's essential that we get best uh, value from the limited funds that are available. And it's clear from the leaked reports in recent years about internal audits being extremely lax in terms of the oversight in spending in the HSE. And that absolutely must change. It's unacceptable. We can't afford waste. Um, what is proposed is limited, and there's an urgent need uh, that we begin seeing uh, the shape of the organisation that will run our health services. And I don't want, I mean, I just don't think that this piecemeal approach is very convincing. In a very useful paper delivered a, a few years ago at the McGill Summer School, Eddie Malloy talked about Ireland's sixth uh, crisis, which he described as severe implementation deficit disorder which for those of us who want to see significant or radical uh, reform in many of our institutions, we will identify with. Um, in the paper, he says that the main carriers of the disorder are organised groups with strong bargaining power. He includes senior public servants, executives, medical consult consultants and board members who have reached the top of their uh, respective organisations. They're also a good cultural fit in inverted commas, for the board, and were unlikely to question the prevailing culture, a safe pair of hands, whose core via value was loyalty to their own group, their own circle, golden or otherwise. He argues that we need to strengthen the strategic centre and goes on to say we need to establish the discipline of real, edgy, transparent strategic management. While um, public agencies publish, publish st strategic plans about every three years, but the track record and implementation is poor. We all know about this. They're all on, on shelves. Um, but they think the job is done when they have published the report and it's there and you, people can read it. Um, but there's no effective syst system of a strategic review um, and transparent reporting. He also seeks the formation of uh, senior, uh, 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 the formation of senior public servants. By formation is meant not merely training in administrative and uh, sector-specific skills, but the inculcation of a value system. 
He, ident he identifies institutional culture as the root cause of the failure and the biggest obstacle to reform and highlights several concrete steps that can be taken. Have I got it? Much time? Minutes? Right, thank you. Uh, he he uh, includes uh, boards and senior executive teams should give quality time on a regular basis to engaging with the organisation's values and culture. Uh, make uh, a cultural audit an, an integral part, an integral element of strategic planning, and, and make a section of culture a requirement in all annual, annual, annual reports. Now, I know culture is really difficult to change in an organisation, but if you don't try it, if it's not on the agenda. There is no chance of changing it. He talks about uh, initiating a major multi-year uh, programme to uh, uh, reappropriate and breed life into the uh, foundational values of the public service. So it's been deliberate about the kind of change that you're looking for. These are elements of a much longer paper, which was uh, more widely focused, but nonetheless, I think they're, they're very relevant to this particular uh, proposal. Um, we have an old, uh, an old poor, poor law model that we're trying to tweak, and that's not good enough. What's, what's beneath these directorship needs radical uh, reform. Uh, the structure and culture is, are, are, are both uh, in need of reform. Um, it's a whole of organisation reform that, that, that's needed. And the top-down model was the intended change with the HSE. We can see that that, didn't, that, that that didn't work, and I don't understand why, it's, um, why, it's the, um, why it continues to be the favourite approach when, uh, when clearly uh, there's a whole of organisation uh, rep approach needed. It doesn't matter how good this, um, this um, organisational vehicle uh, becomes. If we don't have people with the right skills, in the right places to deliver services to the public, it doesn't matter how good your, manage your management system is. There are serious deficiencies that are, um, that are going to cost money and cost uh, opportunities in people's lives into the future. They need to be addressed. Um, and you know, given the impression that this is a big reform, uh, without addressing those, I think will be seen as a failure for people who present with uh, present with the kind of examples that I use. I wish they were only the only examples I could have used. Unfortunately, um, uh, I think every one of us now have a, have a bank of people that um, uh, you know uh, uh, you know that have that have the kind of, of of deficiencies in terms of service delivery that I'm able to just put my hands on a few just to give an example of. Um, but look at, you know, I, I mean, I'm not opposed to this bill. I just think it's very limited in, in what, it's, in what it, it's doing. And we really urgently need to see what the overall shape of the HSE is going to be into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. And the next speaker on the government side is Deputy Joe Carey of 20 minutes, Deputy, if you're required. Thanks, Chairperson. Um, I, I welcome this opportunity to speak in relation to this bill. Um, this legislation provides for um, three, three different headings, the first of which is the ab abolition of the board structure of the HSC and for uh, a, a directorate to be, to be the new governing body for the HSC in place of the board, headed by a director general. Uh, the second of which is further accountability arrangements for the HSC. And, and third, related matters including a number of technical amendments to take account of the replacement of the board structure for the directorate structure. Um, the HSE was established in uh, 2005. It's a huge organisation providing uh, a broad range of services which are essential to the individuals who are in receipt um, of those services. The programme for government commits to the abolition of the HSE, but, but its abolition will, as the Minister for Health stated in his opening statement at second stage for this bill. It will take careful planning, um, sequencing and, and complex further uh, legislation. This bill is an important step on the road to replacing the HSC with a, with a new health governance structure um, that places the patient uh, at the centre. Um, um, when the HSC was set up by Fianna Fáil, it was taught us that a centralised health service would perform much better than the previous health board structure. Um, the health boards were much criticised, but gave public representatives 
a meaningful role um, in, in holding the health authorities um, to account. What we currently have our health um, regional forums for elected members, which were basically set up uh, as an afterthought, um, you know, w once the HSE was established. And in recent times, um, we, I've heard criticism from forum members um, about the effectiveness um, uh, and, and their lack of accountability from, from the HSC. One of the main areas of concern from, for the general public is the amount of administrators within the HSC structure. The HSC created these positions following the amalgamation of the HSC boards. Effectively, more and more management positions were created on the establishment of the HSC to the detriment of frontline uh, staff such as nurses and, and doctors and ultimately, ultimately to the detriment uh, of patients. Uh, we as a government have a mandate to reform our health services, to fundamentally uh, reorganise and reform the services in a way that places the patient uh, at the centre. This bill is an important billing block on the way to the introduction of a universal health insurance system where money follows the patient. Um, the creation of six uh, national directorates is to be welcomed and will focus on the areas of hospital care, primary care, mental health, uh, child and family care, social care and public health. We need to bring services closer to people so that they can be treated in, in, in their own communities. For example, daycare services are an important component of our health system. In my own community in Clare Castle in County Clare, we have a thriving district daycare service which serves a 10-mile catchment area. 50 people a day um, attend the service uh, and they provide a broad range of, of health services and social activities. This community-led daycare centre represents excellent value for money uh, and has dramatically improved the quality of life of those that attend the services and, and, and their families. In a nutshell, the daycare centre in Clare Castle enables people to live in their communities for longer um, and to live independently. The recently published Midwest PCCC uh, HSC West uh, Area Service Plan 2013 confirms that further uh, enhancements of services at Clare Castle and the recognition of the range of competencies, including that of dementia-specific care, with the creation of a new development fund to support these important activities. This is, is most welcome news, and I wish the hard-working board of the Clare Castle Daycare Centre, uh, the manager and the staff well, as they further develop the services uh, into the future. I also want to wish the board and management of the new Carrigoran Daycare Centre in Newmarket and Fergus well, as they launch their new service. It's the most impressive building um, that will offer a three-day service to his clients. I acknowledge uh, the process of change in the Midwest Regional Hospital Network with the creation of a single hospital system incorporating six, ho six hospital sites, namely Limerick Regional Hospital, Ennis General Hospital, uh, Nina General Hospital, St. John's Limerick, uh, the Regional Maternity Hospital and Croom Orthopaedic Hospital. The primary focus in 2012 was on strengthening governance among the hospital network. This was achieved through the establishment of clinical uh, directors and a new model of corporate and clinical governance. Key areas of patient safety concerns were focused on, um, as well as efficiencies through the creation of a single hospital system in the Midwest region. This approach breaks down traditional barriers and makes it possible to utilize the total capacity of, of the hospital network in the region which is leading to progress in the delivery of targets for scheduled and unscheduled care. I want to welcome the opening of the new 50-bedded uh, ward block at Ennis General Hospital, which is a huge shot in the arm uh, to health services provision in, in County Clare in the Midwest region. In the coming weeks, a new site ma manager will be appointed at Ennis General following the promotion of uh, the former manager there, uh, Frank Keane, um, as manager of the new Maternity and Child Health Directorate. 
Ennis has also been accredited as a colorectal screening site, and this uh, service uh, is due to commence in, in the not too distant future. There is ongoing commissioning of the critical care block at Limerick Regional Hospital with the opening of a state-of-the-art cardiology section uh, backed up with the appointment of five cardiologists. Um, I also want to welcome the commencement of work on the new emergency departments at Limerick Regional uh, and look forward to, to its opening in the next 18 months. Um, the, 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 the Midwest Hospital uh, groups also received an increase in their funding allocation this year of, of 10%, um, you know, and that rises from um, 216 million up to 238 million. And uh, there are still uh, challenges in relation to funding, um, but um, th this is certainly a, a boost. Um, in conclusion, uh, I want to support this legislation as it's an important step towards achieving the goal of a single tier uh, health system together with universal health, care, health insurance. Thank you, Chairperson. Deputy, um, the next speaker is um, Deputy Thomas Pringle, and I understand you want to share your time with Deputy uh, McGrath. Is that correct? Thanks, Deputy. Yeah, ten minutes each. Is that? Share with Deputy McGrath, um, and I'll probably be about ten minutes, and then Deputy McGrath will take over. Uh, <clears throat> the Health Service Executive Governance Bill is, as the Minister has said, on the introduction of the bill, a building block and a tr transitional bill in its programme to reform the health service. The intention, apparently, is to give the Minister more control of the health over the health services. We have seen in the last year what more control of health services means in practice for the Minister. We had the debacle of the prioritisation of primary health care centres that led to the resignation of the Junior Minister for Health. New areas in the Minister's own constituencies were added at the last minute to the list without the knowledge of any of his Cabinet colleagues or, it seems, of the HSE itself. We have also seen the two hospital building projects were announced by Ministers Hogan and Howland before the HSE even knew that they were being prioritised. Is this the type of governance that the Minister is talking about? We will continue to see this type of action from the Minister in the future. I have no doubt about that. But if the examples above are not bad enough, they are not what the Minister intends in this bill. The bill will provide for the establishment of a new management structure in the health services, creating a tier of directorships that will operate alongside the existing HSE structure of national directorships while he prepares to abolish the HSE. And all this will be done without any cost to, extra cost to the Exchequer, or so we are told. What will happen in the tr transitional period that the Minister is now establishing? Will there be a freeze in the work of the health services as staff wait to see how the structure will emerge? We saw this before when the HSE was established, and this led to years of inertia when many workers and decision makers at a local level not able to know where decisions should be made or by whom. A change of this magnitude that the Minister is proposing needs to be managed, and an organisation like the Health Service should have a change management team in place. This should cost money if it is done right. How can an organisation of almost 100,000 people change fundamentally without it costing anything? The building block that this bill is supposed to be part of is a move to the universal health insurance model that the government want to introduce in the image of the Dutch model. In this system, we are told that money will follow the patient. I would remind the Minister of what his predecessor, Mary Harney, said when introducing the 2004 Health Act. It is our generation's chance to put patients first in the design of the management of health services. It is our chance to put in place modern effective management to make the best use of these tremendous resources we are applying to health and to get clear value and clear results for that money. It is our chance to create a system where money can follow patients and where outcomes can be measured. Those words will sound very familiar on the government side of the House. They have been uttered by Minister Riley on many occasions and have they, they have been the mantra of Fine Gael members for years now. I for one hope that this Minister's plans go the way of the previous Ministers and in years to come the health services will be reformed to get away from the universal health insurance model. I do not believe that universal health insurance will be a system that will have the faith of the Irish people and I will not support this government's effort to introduce it. Unfortunately, the government are moving on the road to create the system, and this bill is one part of that programme. The rollout of the hospital groups is also a step, a step with the English system of trust being established. This will drive the move to privatising the health system and handing over control to private health insurance companies. 
The programme for government sets out that the hospital purchasing arm will merge with the National Treatment Purchase Fund to become a new purchaser of public patient care in the period of transition. So it seems that the Department of Health will purchase hospital care for public patients from the hospital groups. And this will fit nicely into the universal health insurance companies. For many reasons, this move to universal health insurance will mean that health will become more expensive and access will be restricted for citizens. When universal health insurance was introduced in the Netherlands in 2006, there were 13 health insurance companies operating there. Today there are five. This is in a country with a population of 18 million people. What will we expect to see in a country of 4.5 million? The state will provide limited care for people who cannot afford it, with, many, with, with maybe two companies operating and profiteering from those who have no choice but to purchase from them. In 2006 in the Netherlands, the average health cover cost around €1,000 per citizen. Today it costs over €3,000 per citizen. How does that equate to progress? In the Netherlands, Universal Health Insurance buys a, pay, buys a basic package of health care and they now have a system where citizens have to buy top-ups to increase their cover. We will see the same thing happening here, but probably quicker. In discussing this bill in the House, many Phil and Yale members have complained that we are spending over €13 billion Euros on the health services and that this can't continue. There is lots of talk from them about how the health services have to spend the money in better ways. They have to achieve more for less. But that is all it is, is using these fancy phrases. I haven't heard any one of them say, identify how, where this waste is and, how it, and give concrete examples of where savings can be made. There has been tension by all accounts between the HSE and the Department of Health on where savings can be made. The department and politicians claim that there are billions to be saved from the elusive word efficiencies and that, the, that other great mantra of getting rid of waste. The HSE are claiming that they cannot do much more and maintain services without the government tackling the things that the HSE have no control over. The response of the Minister has to be, has to be introduced a so-called graduate nursing scheme, and that's going to be rolled out to other health prof professionals, cutting the wages of frontline health workers in order to save peanuts. So if one good thing would come out of this bill, it would be that the Department of Health would not be able to hide behind the HSE and accept that they are not funding the service adequately. I do believe that the Minister should have more control of the health services, and he should also be accountable for the health, how the health services work or do not work. So should health care providers. The real issue and the problem with the HSE is that there is no accountability, a lack of clear information and in a country of our size, it depends where you live, what type of treatment you can expect to get. Just look at the, the debacle over catchment areas in Dublin hospitals that I highlighted in this house last year. But I do believe that the health services might have reached or even gone beyond the, the point that levels of cuts that it can sustain. Unless, of course, there is this huge waste and inefficiencies that we hear mentioned but never hear any detail of. I know for my own county, for example, in the case of Letterkenny General Hospital, that the hospital is probably one of the most efficient hospitals in the country. Over 90% of procedures in the hospital are non-elective, and yet the hospital has started each of the previous two years with, budget, with a budget millions of euros short on what it needs to, needs to maintain services. This has been softened slightly this year with an increase in the budget allocation. Now, this year, Letterkenny General Hospital will only start the year a million euros short of what it needs to maintain the services. The fact of the matter is that if we want a health service that is up to the standard of the best in Europe, it has to be paid for. If the health service improves outcomes and becomes more efficient by treating more people and ending waiting lists, then it will actually cost more. And there's no way from, of getting away from that. The government should be driving a debate about what type of health service we want and how much it would cost to provide it. Do we want a health service that is driven by private health insurance providers, charging thousands of euros per citizen, driving the levels of treatment available with the state picking up the costs of those who cannot aff afford the premium? Or do we want a health service that is free at the point of contact, where every citizen can access treatment as required, and a system that is led by medical need, where citizens can access it based on equality and not wealth. The second option may cost more, but I believe that the Irish people would be willing to pay for it if they believed that it was going to be implemented. Thank you.
Thank you, Deputy and Deputy McGrath. Ten uh, <coughs> first of all, I want to um, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this legislation. And can I, just before I start the, legislation, uh, the debate on the health issue, can I first of all offer my sympathy and condolences to the family of the great President Hugo Chavez of Venezuela, who died yesterday evening, and also my support and solidarity to the people of Venezuela. Uh, Hugo Chavez was a great man and a great president who looked after the poor in Latin America and in his own country, and his record in reducing poverty by 50 per cent, and his imp improved health services over the last 10 years. Uh, have shown that he was a magnificent leader and I just want to offer my deepest support and solidarity to his family and to all the people of Venezuela. I know that there are many Irish people both at home and abroad that would uh, agree with this position and I just want to pass on my condolences to the people. In relation to the debate today, I think it's important that, uh, that we welcome and look at the broader debate on this piece of legislation the Health Service Executive Governance Bill 2012. Once again, this is a very important debate and uh, on the way we run our health service. This is also an important debate on reform and change in our health service. Change and reform are the two words that we were all promised, all of us, not just the government parties, but all politicians at the last election following politics in Ireland over the last five or six years. Nobody denies that we need change, and nobody denies that we need radical reform, and nobody denies that we need a quality health service. And to do this, we, in particular the government, needs to bring our citizens and the staff in our health service with them. Otherwise, it's doomed to failure. So reform and change are part of the agenda, and if people are not up for it, they shouldn't be involved in politics. There are certain aspects of this legislation, which I'll deal with de later on, which I think are uh, uh, the step in the right direction. And I welcome strong aspects of the piece of legislation. And it's important that people, when they see sensible proposals and, uh, coming from the government, and even though I would be an opposition TD, I think it's important if some sensible ideas come out that we look at them and support them, because we all want to improve the health services for our own, for our own citizens. We all know for a fact that we're spending 30 billion, 13 billion on the health service. And we all want to get efficiencies, we all want to get quality uh, people, and we all want to deliver uh, an efficient service in a professional way. So there's no contradiction and there's no opposing view in relation to that particular issue. What we have is my own personal and broader view is, and long term wise, I would like to see a universal health service paid for out of taxation. But I'll deal with that later on. At the moment, we're looking at the whole idea of the universal uh, health insurance issue, and I will talk about it as well, because I think there are aspects in this legislation which will be very, very positive. When you go into the details of the legislation, you see the health service executive, it abolishes the current board structure governing the, H, uh, the, H, the health service executive. It replaces this with a system of directorates headed by a director general, and the bill for also provides for additional accountability arrangements in the HSC. The director's structure is intended to be an interim measure pending the ultimate dissolution of the HSE, which will require further legislation. This bill does not change the legal status of the HSE under the Health Act 2004. So basically, that's what the legislation is about. And this is where I welcome it. It replaces it with a system of directorates headed by a director general. I want to see people lead and change. And I want to see directors getting out there and bringing in the, the radical reform that's needed. We've had too much bureaucracy in the past, and I know from the, uh, in a past experience uh, uh, when, when uh, I was pushing the issue with the previous government and all the cock-ups and delays in relation, for example, to the cystic fibrosis unit in, uh, in, in St. Vincent's Hospital. There was a tough war between the HSE, the Department of Health, the Minister's Office, everything like that going on, and who suffered in the end? The patient with cystic fibrosis. Now, thankfully, eventually, that the unit has been built, and I welcome the fact that that was done. But I remember those families, and I remember dealing with them every single day, and the trauma it caused. What I'm saying is, we need decisive leadership, and if there are proposals in this legislation, which I see very clearly, I will support them. And I make no apologies about that as well, because we need to ensure that we have drivers for change within these issues and I see the Director General and also I also the fact that I the one thing that I really welcome in this is the, the additional accountability arrangements for the HSE. That's something that we all get and we all see. And whether it's somebody in relation to 
uh, a person in a trolley or somebody with a disability. We have to have accountability and we have to people who take responsibility for the jobs. I remember the previous job I worked as a principal in a disadvantaged school in the north in a city school and I often laugh when I hear the story about the bankers wasting money and developers speculating and all things going wrong. And I remember doing our books every June to have it ready for the Kigra, as Deputy O'Dowd know well, the inspector come in. And if you were 10 euro over budget, he'd be down you like a ton of bricks. And if I had to, if I was over 40 euro over budget, and I had to go to the parents' council and ask the parents' council, listen, can I take 40 euro from the parents' council money and put it into the, the school money just to make sure the books were in order?